I've always been people who were lighter skin and straighter hair from 60,000 years ago. Always. They're not new. That's my whole point. In fact, I could make the argument that, that kind, those kinds of characteristics actually originated in Africa. Yeah, that they didn't come from someplace else. Yeah. They're part of, of modern humanity or they're part of humanity. And there's no reason to believe that they could not have originated in Africa. Incidentally, incidentally, skin color can flip back and forth from an evolutionary point of view, we, we now know, every 15,000 or so years. It's not the sort of thing that, you know, it takes 100,000 years, million years to live in one place. And, and skin color itself is not always an accurate index, even in current situations like in Brazil and Venezuela. It doesn't necessarily give you a proportionate amount of ancestry. You can have people with very fair skin, but actually have more, quote unquote, black ancestors than some people who are actually darker. So you have to be very careful about what you think you can quantify from that, again, based on science evidence. Now, there are the issue of having narrow features, a narrow face, and what have you, we have remains, and normally I would show you this slide, but I, you know, we're not going to get to that today, of people from Gamble's Cave in East Africa down in Kenya that are probably about 10 to 12,000 years old. If you measure them up and submit them to a forensic type analysis, they'll cluster with Europeans. They're not Europeans. Their limb ratios are as tropical as you can be. They come from right there. That's what you have to get on to. Uh, Charlie, uh, you could ask more questions yeah, later. I'd like to give okay. somebody else a chance, and uh, you can carry on later, yeah? Anybody else? Okay, we need to stop. Oh, okay, sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you place stock in Darwin's um, theory of evolution, and I'm, I'm just trying to get an idea from what the questions I'm hearing is. I mean, what would you define, then, as an African? I don't define an African or the African. There is a matrix of variability that constitutes a description of an African reality. Very different notion. The moment you start defining things with narrow terms and in particular ways and a non for something that's as fluid as this is the moment that you will get into trouble because then you're going to be forced to explain things, uh, like I said, with typological methods or deductive methods when they don't fit. Okay? It's a shame we ran out of time for this section because that would have been really fascinating. It's just that you said there's an, and I do hear your point, there's a diversity within the African identity or, or spectrum. It, it just feels that if there is no, I mean, we don't just need to talk about the African identity. I mean, I, I'm again, I don't subscribe to the notion of race either. But I think if we're using terms like African or Egyptian, which is probably more geopolitical in that context, but if we're using terms like that to, to define a reality, surely there must be a boundary, or so it isn't diversity we're talking about, we're talking about an entirety of the human race, which is one, and then we start to lose. No, no, you don't lose Where's it because the you have Where's the for the diversity? No, no, you don't, you don't lose anything because you have your model-based approach. You have uh, a real history of a species that emerged in Africa. You have some real fossils. You have some real people that you can look at. You have some real DNA evidence that ties together. Frankly, I was quite astounded when I found that, that the, when the Y chromosome data got produced, they didn't have that 25 years ago when I first started on this adventure. Uh, but, but I am pleased to say that I, that I wrote, and you can get my master's thesis, I wrote, I said, there's no theoretical reason why these Berbers from Algeria couldn't be, have share common ancestors in the late Pleistocene. And sure enough, 20 years later, when the DNA came out, because what most people would say is they look at these Berbers, and I have pictures of them, they say, oh, these are descendants of the Vandals, because they look like Europeans. Well, I'm trying to have you understand that God or evolution, whichever one you want to choose to work with, is, works in mysterious ways. And I'm trying to have you understand that from a scientific point of view, that PN2 marker, that PN2 gene, ties 70 percent of the continent together and there's some other things that are basically only restricted to Africa except for the odd one you find outside groups A and B. This, this belongs to the E group. We can talk about that later but no what you're saying is that if you don't have some hard and fast boundaries then it's hard for you to work with certain things and I'm saying that would be like saying that if your son 
uh, if you had six sons and one of them moved to China and his descendants were only Chinese and one moved to Greenland and his descendants were only Inuit and another son moved to, I don't know, the Amazon and his descendants were only, you know, folks from the Amazon, that they wouldn't be your relatives. That would not patently be not true. Genealogically, they would all be connected to you because you're the grandpa. They're still connected. The idea that physical similarity will always track with relationship is what we're trying to get. I'm trying to dispel you of that notion because it's not always true. And so there's sometimes people who may look very similar or, or when you measure certain things, they may appear to be similar based on the math. But in actual fact, using other measures and, and other kinds of information, you know that that can't possibly be true. You know, so if, so when I go down to uh, when I go up to, uh, you know, when I go to some village in the Sudan and I say that guy looks just like God conference in London. I mean, they must be. Oh. No, it's not your twin brother. You know, it's an accident. It's an accident. There is something in physical anthropology and evolutionary bi biology called polytopicity. And polytopicity was a problem for. Uh, early evolutionary biologists uh, who were interested in taxonomy and classification. Why? Because polytopicity refers to the fact that you have similar looking groups of organisms uh, or you have a group of organisms in one place that looks very similar to another group of organisms in another in terms of whether it was their wing shape, their morphology, in terms of things that you can measure. But the dilemma was should you group these things together when one was 10,000 miles away from the other and there was no way that, that one got from one place to the other. In other words, they were not closely historically connected. So it's called polytopicity. It's one of the problems with the subspecies concept for zoologists and the subspecies concept in zoology is the same as the race idea for human beings. Only with human beings there's even more problems than there were for the zoologists. Problem of classification. So uh, my human example of polytopicity is certain people from Vanuatu and Papua New Guinea and those places who, for everybody who just sees them on the street, based on your own social experience, you say, oh, they, oh these look like Africans. Are, are they, these are Africans. Well, no, they're not. No, they're not. Their lineage DNA says they're not. Where they live says they're not. And their languages definitely put them very far afield. But they live in tropical climates. Modern humans were tropical to begin with. Are these retentions from early migrations? Or are they just re, reacquisitions of tropical traits? Now, no one can answer that. But their DNA clearly ties them to Asia. I mean, the lineage DNA. And there's some other interesting things about DNA, too. Uh, other markers, OK, other, and I have to finish now. Other markers clearly, uh, in terms of lines of descent, tie together. Uh, not just simply all of humanity, you can forget that there's some other more sp specific markers that tie people from China all the way to Africa together. And it's like amazing. That's the YAP marker, you know. And there used to be a debate, did the YAP marker arise in Africa, arise in Asia? If you say the YAP marker arose in Asia, then you're saying most of all Africans today came from Asia. Now, I know certain people don't want to hear that, you know, those who are ideologically oriented in particular ways. So no, you know, and, but the proof so to speak, is that number one, that wasn't very logical based on the dates of the emergence of the YAP marker, but also within Nigeria today, they found some people who have the YAP marker, uh, well, I, that's a long story, but anyway, the, it, it sort of submits that Africa is the, the place of origin for this particular marker. Okay? At the time when the Homo sapiens first emerged from Africa, they were Negroes at that time. What do you mean? No, I don't Sat use that. No, I don't use that uh, term, Negro. Yeah, I don't mean Sat. I'm just trying to make a strong point. Were they black? Of a black race? Well, in ter in terms of their skin color, they would have been dark based on ecological principles. Based on principles, that's I guess. Do we have any empirical well, proof? You could be dark and Asian, or you could be dark and black. For what I'm saying, sorry to word, use the word Negro, but at 